immediately after we tandega our guest started uh, the journey. Um, yeah, it's an exciting, it's an exciting moment. It's a, it's a, like a full cycle. We, we she started okay. with me, and then now she's here as a guest to share with me her learnings in the <laughs> in the in the industry. And I know that I will I will learn a lot. And I hope now Nani, you you are ready to to get started and and to learn uh, from her. Tandega, thank you for for joining us uh, this morning. We always, yeah, and... we always appreciate people coming through uh, to share their life because this is not just a moment of sharing a knowledge. You're sharing your knowledge, you're sharing your time, uh, you're sharing your commitment uh, by being here uh, today. So basically, you're sharing a piece of your life with us this morning, which is highly appreciated. And of course, we are going to learn from, from you. Yes, thank you so much, guys, for having me. I am I'm actually so grateful because I used to join this um these meetings, these roundtables. I used to be one of the people that paid and invested in in joining them, and I am so grateful, Gonzo, for for your knowledge. Because yeah, I made a lot of mistakes, but I I feel like if I did not have the knowledge that you guys in these roundtables gave me, I would have made a disaster even worse because um, one thing that I've learned in my journey, it is so very important to invest in yourself, in the knowledge. You must invest in the books. And I think mostly it's very important to actually have a mentor uh, that will actually hold your hands when you are making those deals because I've learned that you will, you're gonna pay school fees. School fees you will pay and you will lose a lot of money. And uh, what I've seen, um, one thing that I'm grateful for in my journey is that the mistakes that I made were not, um, were mistakes that I could learn from because uh, other people, they make mistakes in property and um, they never recover. They mm -hmm. never recover. So because those mistakes involve a lot of money, and they involve uh, your credit profile. And it's so challenging and difficult sometimes to even fix that. So um, having a mentor is yo, very important. That's one of the things that I've, I've learned to actually, it's very important to invest in, in your education. Even though I did a bit invest there and there, I, I do wish I, I would have done more investing i would have paid even more money to have someone actually hold my hand in each step and yeah yeah yes yeah no thanks thanks, so, for, those, thanks mm. for those opening words um but i think let's let's start from the beginning uh, and then go with this chronologically from from where you started i know that your 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 first deal you started it without paying a single cent so i want us to mm probably just take us through that deal in terms of how you found it and um and uh, what then happens what what were the learnings uh, uh, in that deal during the course of of the of the owning of the when i'm saying owning and i mean it in in brackets because i know you did not fully own uh, the, the the property maybe let's just start from the beginning how did you get uh, how did you get started how 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 were you even introduced to to property Okay, I think my my journey in Gonzo, when now that I look at it uh, and, you know, reflect from my life. So um, my journey, I think it began from a very young age. Just what I did not, um, you know, I didn't know until this point in my life. So my journey began from my own parents. When my parents were, like, my mom and my father, we used to stay at the back room, Gakokwam. So Kakokwami, there is rooms, two, like a two room outside, which we used as a kitchen and a bedroom. So my parents, my father wanted to expand their family. And my mother, because we see Salam, uh, we see Salam in my grandmother's house, she did not want to expand while we still staying in a bedroom. So that was one of the arguments they always had, talking about uh, Ugu expander and getting a, a bigger house so we can expand the family. So around that time, I was very young. I was still around, I think, I think I was seven or six. So my mom started looking for a house. 
so where I'm from, I'm from Carolina and there's not much transactions of property that happens in, in that area, even till today. So it's always a word of mouth kind of, kind of, of sense kind of things. So my mom started looking for a house, telling people around the community that uh, she's looking to buy a, a stand or a, a shack or an RTP, but anything that a, a house. So that's when my journey began with property. So we, we went to a lot of viewings with my mother to go and see the people that were, were selling. So um, I remember there was a particular day when there's a, there's a, there's a, a lady that came to our house to come and tell my mom that there was a guy from Department of Labor that was selling an RTP. So at that time, it was still the beginning of RTPs because it was it was around the 1990s, 2000, the early 2000s. So um, we went there to go and view the house with my mother. And we my mother liked the house and uh, the transaction uh, actually happened. So that is, that is my first, first ever experience with property so and then we, we 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 did that and we we moved into the house and the family started expanding my brothers were born and and that was my first experience uh, with property so uh growing up you know um i i'm just because i did not have the knowledge that i could make a career out of this uh, of this industry i always had the mindset of you need money in order to actually be in property. So I always had that thing in my mind that maybe I, I need to save a lot of money in order for me to be in property. So um, I think that also came also from my family because my father saved up the money to buy the RTP. So he, he saved up the money to buy the RTP. So um, growing up then I, I, I studied and then I, I started working. So in my first um, job as an employee, I I wanted a way to get into the property industry. So that's when I discovered the power of, of a pay slip by attending such events like the round tables. That's when I learned that you can actually use your pay slip and your credit profile. Those two combinations are the ones that opened um, a lot of doors for me. So basically um, my first deal, I did it. I, Oh, I learned that, okay, you, you need to save up for, for transfer cost. So I, um, I saved up for, for the transfer cost. And, and then what I did was that I started looking for a house. And then I, I looked for a house that I was going to, I was, I was going to rent out. So in, in, in that, uh, in that process, I started sharing my dreams with people around me. Uh, which is my family, which is my friends, which came, um, which comes to the the question that Edgar asked me uh, earlier. That um, that why is it that a lot of women are not involved in real estate, but they are the ones that buy a lot a, a lot of houses to stay in. They buy houses um, to stay in, but they don't invest in real estate. So um, when I started sharing my dream of becoming an investor of becoming a landlord. A lot of a fear and a lot of fear came from the people that were around me, not because they were stopping me from um, achieving my dreams or because they were jealous or anything like that, no, but because they were scared for me. Basically being, to them, a landlord is a man. A landlord is someone that will be that has, you know, to them, it's someone that is, has power to be able to take out a tenant when they're not paying. So when they looked at me, I did not meet that profile. I'm very small in structure. Um, I'm very sm small in structure. And I am a female. I am young. So in, in, my, in my mother's mind and my family around me, they believed that I was going to get people that will stay in my house and not pay. And I was going to ruin my life, basically. So that fear could have stopped me. But uh, for me, I realized that I could, I could turn that fear and show them that it is actually 
possible for females to do that, to, to, to succeed in real estate, to be landlords, to be, to be investors, to be developers. So um, I actually um, went on with the dream that I had. So I went and um, I, I decided that, okay, because these people were now not supporting me, but discouraging me that I was not going to be able to, to do this, um, to do this, this business, this dream, to make this dream uh, a fulfillment. So basically I stopped telling them, I stopped uh, sharing my, stopped sharing my, my knowledge with them, stopped sharing my dreams with them. So what I did, I basically went to Property24 and I started looking for, for houses. Number one, um, I did not know. Number one, I didn't know who my target market was. I was just, you know, I thought, uh, you know, if you buy a house, you're gonna, you're just gonna get tenants. I did not have the the vision of who is my ideal target market. Who is this person that I want to to accommodate in my house? So I did not mistake my number one for me not having a clear a vision of. Who is my my target market? What are their needs? What are they What are they looking for? And how can I meet those needs? Am I am I am, am I gonna buy for for students? Am I gonna buy for the working class? Who am I? Um, who am I targeting to come and in to come and stay in my house? So I did not have that 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 thing clear. So that is one of the mistakes that first time investors make. They do not, they are not clear on who is it they are targeting. They just, you know, they just believe that they're going to buy a house and they're going to turn it into, into a rental and then people will just come and stay there. They're not, they're not clear of who they are looking for. So that was one of the mistakes that I made. I was not clear of who I was looking for. And then the second, while I was getting my first deal, I, I, I first signed um, the offer to purchase for another house. And I always thank God. I believe in God. I always thank God that, you know, God is a faithful God because that house, now that I have the experience that I have, and now that I have the knowledge that I have, that house would have not worked for me. That house would have been my graveyard. I would have not um, done anything else in property uh, um, if that house went through. Because, you know, uh, basically, you know, when you tell agents what you want and they take your, they take your affordability and they see how much you afford, you, are, you afford, they will, just because you said you wanted to be, to, you know, to be an investor, they only look for you a big house, a house that is, that looks like, that looks like what you are looking for. Like, if it's spacious, they're going to give you that house. If it has, um, you know, a big yard, they're gonna give you that house and say, hey, you can you can do this with this house, you can do that with this house, and you end up buying something that will actually not work. So the first house that I signed an offer to purchase for was uh, uh, it was a I think a three bedroom house, um, it, a lounge and um, a dining room, and it had, I, I it had something like um, it was like a second house, but it was not fully, it was not it could be potentially a second house but it was not done but for someone in my situation that would have been a, a failure because I did not have money to actually invest and renovate that house maybe because the roof was was the roof was was out the roof was very bad for the second house and um, I needed a, a new structure in order for me to be able to do it because I did not have money to do that it would have it would have failed and my, my, my dream would have died and I would have been in, bought the wrong house that would have not made me money. So that house uh, did not go through. So in that, I was, uh, I w I'm still very grateful for that, that someone else uh, bought the house before, um, before me. So that offer to purchase failed and then I went to my second uh, offer. And then they got me another house, which was much better and also, the location of the second house was much better than the first house, which um, the location of this second house was in, it was near town. It was near a college. It was near um, Sasol Femme, like 
the industry where people, a lot of people work. So a lot of people work in Sasso here. So it was a walking distance to Sasso and it, it was just the perfect, perfect location. So for me, what, what also helped me was 